Hey everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Becker Designs. I've got a fun little card for you today featuring the Rustic Crate Bundle. This is the feature on my blog this week. I really like this stamp set because it has fall, Christmas, and, you know, anytime, spring, summer. Um, so you can really use this any time of the year. And I really like the dies. Now, our card for this project isn't featuring the 3D crate. I guess it's not really 3D, but um, it's a die cut paper piece crate and it's so cute. I have several other project videos um, using this uh, bundle. So if you're looking for them, make sure you hop over to my blog or uh, here on YouTube to find the other videos. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to point out that I'm using, um, I'm using actually two different designer series paper packs. This one, and I can't ever remember, Garden Walk is the name. And I thought, oh my gosh, how perfect is that? We are definitely using this paper. So we're using the this piece of this paper. And this paper really has some great spring colors in it, but it also has uh, that Christmassy pattern. And it has our, um, that color right there. Um, why am I drawing a blank on it? You, wild Wheat. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of an old color name. You probably know which one. Um, Wild Wheat, which is a great fall color. So six by six pack. But then I'm using also in conjunction with that Joy of Christmas, which is probably my favorite paper in our current September to December mini catalog. Okay, well, let's do our stamping first. I always like to start there. Um, we are going to stamp our little uh, poinsettia in memento black on basic white and the colors in these two papers the red is different uh, one is poppy parade and one is real red but when you look at them together you really can't tell so whichever red you decide to use will totally work just fine i am also using old olive and that wild wheat color right there for the center of our poinsettia. Now I have to pull my chair over because I can't color while standing up. I <laughs> do everything else standing up, but not coloring. All right, let's start with our uh, flower. Now, if you have glasses, go ahead and get them. Uh, my glasses are not here in my studio right now. I've actually <laughs> lost them. How many of you um, can relate? Um, they are in a case and I think I took them into the house somewhere, which is weird because I have a set of glasses for there as well. So who knows? So we're gonna try our best for this video to color without making a huge mess without my glasses. I have never worn glasses my whole life until I reached 45 and now I can barely see <laughs> to do anything. Anyhow, um, I am using Poppy Parade. I'm using the bullet end of my marker and I'm taking the light Poppy Parade and I am just going and I'm gonna do one flower at a time. Um, there are some petals here that I can't tell if they are leaves or if they are petals. So I've decided to make them all petals except for those two big ones that are obviously leaves. Now I'm gonna leave that open and I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna add in color wherever the petals are overlapping, as well as those veins down the middle. Um, wherever a petal would be overlapping another petal is going to create a shadow. And so that's where you really wanna add your dark. And these petals that are in the back, you can pretty much color them all the dark color. And you know what? A lot of times I'll take my light and blend that out, but I think I, I'm just gonna leave it maybe right there. I like how the variation in the colors look. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come over here and do this other one. Again, we will use our dark Poppy Parade to color wherever these are overlapping. Now I was thinking about these flowers and that paper that I just showed you, and I think that this flower could be colored any color and be any kind of flower that you wanted it to. I immediately just thought poinsettia because it is late September and I, you know, my mind is in the holidays, but I am thinking, you know, pinks or yellows, purples, whatever you want to do, you could use this flower later on. 
to match whatever color paper you're using. All right, again, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna get real close into where this leaf, this uh, petal is overlapping and just really go underneath that to give that some dimension. All right, and then just add in, it's gonna be darker towards the center. All right, now for the old olive, I'm gonna take my light old olive first and color that in. Our markers have two ends. It has a brush tip and a bullet tip. I prefer the bullet tip. I think I stay in the lines a whole lot um, better, more consistently if I am using the bullet end. The brush tip is great for larger spaces. Um, it's also great for flicking color onto your projects if you like to do that. But play around, see which one you prefer. Another um, technique is to do all this dark coloring first and then go back with your light and color on top of that. So again, just a matter of preference. One of my closest friends does it the complete opposite way as I do, and her coloring is gorgeous. So, you know, I don't think there's really any right or wrong. Now here's that wild wheat color, and I'm gonna color in the center like that. All right, we are ready to cut this out. Of course, we have matching dyes. And we're gonna get this. I'm also gonna use this right here to cut out our gold foil um, and a little, we'll cut out a little, like the backside. The, 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 what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? I, not a tag, but I guess maybe a label. I guess it could be a tag. Um, it cuts both at the same time. So we'll just put that on there and then we'll line this up. up I have new plates for my cut and emboss machine, but I didn't get them. So because mine are so warped, I do not want to have to recolor this. So I'm gonna take some post-it tape and hold that down like that. Now the crate um, that we're stamping does have a die that cuts it out, but I decided to stamp it directly onto a rectangle. So we're not gonna cut that out. Now we'll also just get this off. We'll also take this one right here and cut that little, we just need that part right there. And there we go. All right. Now let's get our pieces and put it all together. All right, I have a radiating stitches rectangle. This is the smaller one. And we're gonna stamp our um, crate right here in the center on the bottom in early espresso. All right, and then I'm gonna take my dimensionals And we'll put our beautiful flowers right here, like that. Do I want to? Nope, they could definitely go that way. They look upside down as soon as I did that. All right, for our sentiment, I'm just going to use the small for you right there in Poppy Parade. And we'll use some small dimensionals to put this on our mini dimensionals, or the babies, as I like to call them. And I am using my take your pick tool because they're tiny and they're a little bit hard to handle when you've got fingernails, long fingernails. All right, so there we're gonna put that. Now we have cut out this gold frame part. And if you had ahead of time thought about putting an uh, adhesive sheet on the back, that would work really well. But I'm gonna, I didn't do that, so we're going to just add some liquid glue. And I like to take a scrap piece 
and kind of wipe off that extra so it's not globby. And we'll put that very carefully on top of there like that. All right, let's set that aside to dry and let's put our card base together. I have an early espresso card base. And um, this, a lot of times I will put my fold at the top of my card and so it's long this way, but I'm gonna tie my uh, baker's twine uh, or my jute twine around this uh, way. So I put the fold on this side and I'm gonna completely cover the front of my card. So I have cut my pieces longer and I'm gonna trim them off so that they fit our card. You're not gonna see that card base at all. All right, so there's that. And then we'll do the poinsettia piece like that. And then my favorite gingham piece right there. And then you can take your trimmer or your paper snips. And of course, I don't have my big scissors, so we'll just use our paper snips and just trim that off. Now, if you're really good at cutting your paper, you can cut them five and a half inches in length, but I seem to always be just a little bit short. So I find that if I cut them a little bit longer, then that gives me some leeway. Now, this is the Wild Wheat Jute Trim. Our uh, jute trim comes in um, a five pack that has all of our current in colors. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. My my jute, as you can see, is very curly, and I could not get it to lay down flat. So what I did was take um, my mini glue dots, and I folded them in half so that they're skinny, kind of just a little glob, and I'm gonna arrange this exactly where I want it to go. And I'm gonna stick down that those ends. So if you just kind of scrape your glue dot over, it'll fold in half and then it's kind of skinny. And you can just hide it right behind that jute. I think you could probably lay your jute out and put something flat on it and it wouldn't be so curly, but of course I never think ahead of time to do these things. But this will solve the problem just, just as well. Let's fold that in half, make it just a little glob. And there we go. Now it looks like a perfect bow just laying there. And we'll grab, you know what, let's do the inside first because my other piece is still a little bit wet. So this is a four by five and a fourth inch piece of basic white. Now I'm gonna take another strip of that Joy of Christmas plaid. And I think I'm gonna make it five and a half inches, a little bit longer than the white piece like that. Now we'll get our dimensionals and put our rectangle, our little star of the show on here, like that. Now, Sampin' Up! is known for their color coordination. So we've used our um, wild wheat jute, we've used wild wheat um, Stampin' Blends, and it's also in our designer series paper. So I thought, let's find a wild wheat embellishment. So these are our, our gems, our in-color um, dots, and you can add a few of those. To your card to give it a little something extra. All right, and there you go. Um, now, again, this is a Christmas colored card. It doesn't say Christmas. You could easily change the colors like we talked about, use different paper, and make this an all occasion for you card. All right, you guys, make sure you click the link here on YouTube, hop over to my blog. There's a free PDF with measurements and supply list and two other rustic crate projects for you. Let me know if you have questions. I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.